You do this, you just leveled your life up 20x. I'm just telling you, if you want to be the best, this is how you do it. I don't get what I want, I get what I need. Every single day I'm heading off to my dream and I get everything that I damn well please. I don't give a damn if you all listen to me because I run it. So if, if you're going to take notes with me, look, I got a really nice book every day. I take notes in it, I, I write in it, I fill it up every day. I mean, this is just every day. I take this head and I dump out everything that I'm thinking about all day long on here. I carry this with me, I fill it up every day, and when I'm done, I move on, I get another one. I use spiral notebooks as I've gotten a, a little bit older in life. I, I, I like leather books because I keep track of them. They're a little bit nicer, but spiral notebooks will work. If you guys don't take what's in your head and write it down, you're running on a treadmill. You're never gonna go anywhere. You're gonna stay in the same place. Remember this, if you're a visionary, okay? If you have an idea what you wanna do and you don't take action, no one will know your name. That means you can't coach anybody if people don't know you. A lot of you, you you probably are just like me. You're really good at something, but what does it matter if you're good at it and nobody knows you, okay? So I want you to do me a favor. Let's talk about coaching for a minute, all right? If you're a coach and you can impact and change someone's life, they're going to have to want to be you first. You can't give somebody something you're not. So if you guys look at my shirt, right? Y'all see this shirt? I want you to look at the shirt I'm currently wearing, right? I want you to ask yourself, what shirt are you wearing right now? Is it your brand or is it someone else's brand? Alex Smith, what shirt do you have on, son? It ain't, doesn't say Alex Smith. I don't know, but listen to me. Everybody, understand this. Alex, come on real quick. Alex, imagine this. If you had your shirt on right now and it said no, no. it said Smith right across the front, big dog. Look badass and shit. Imagine that. Look, <laughs> hey, you know what I'm talking about too. But guess what? You guys yeah, are like, but you guys, you guys still aren't doing it. So here's what I want you to do. Clean your wardrobes out. Empty them, trash it all, burn it all. Your wife's gonna be like, don't do that, don't do that. Listen, I have two shirts, Elliot and Elliot Army. Which one do I wanna wear today? Listen, I'm gonna tell you guys something, this is super important, okay? A lot of you, you don't wear your brand, you don't rep your brand, which means you don't have a brand. I wanna explain this to you. If you wanna grow the greatest company in the history of the world, you must be the most interesting person in the history of the world. That way that people like you, so they'll like your company. Nobody follows the Elliott Group without following Andy Elliott. Now, because of me, I built a team and they also wear Elliott. People go, oh man, you got your whole team wearing your name? This isn't my name, dumbass. This is our movement. This is what we can believe in. This is our, our culture, okay? This quit being a last name a long time ago, okay? Now you think so small you can't understand that, but this is a movement. So I want you guys to do me a favor. I want you to write this down, movement. Every one of you right now, what you're doing in life right now is a job to make money. Your goal is to get so good at it that you can become a coach and an influencer. And then you can teach it to others, which you'll love. And teaching others to do what you were good at is better than fucking doing it. I do it now and I teach people to get to be good at it. So I want you guys to understand something. I want you to, to realize there's gonna be some different levels of us getting together and doing training. There's gonna be this last quarter of 2023. How can we finish out, make some more money, maybe uh, start a business, maybe increase the revenue in the business, maybe start the brand that we've been slow poking around to build, maybe make some decisions with some people that we've been needing to make. Um, but then also there's what we're gonna do in 2024 and what we're gonna do in 2025. Now, I, I don't wanna get too far ahead, but I do wanna tell you guys what the next 10 years are gonna look like. I'm gonna paint a picture, I'm gonna give them to you, and it's up to you to decide to be a part of it or to not be a part of it. But this is what's gonna happen and, it, and there's nothing you can do to stop it. It's either you're gonna be all in and you're gonna be a big game changer in it or you're gonna get your ass kicked by somebody that understands it. And I know where it's going. The next 10 years, the news is going to go away, except for dummies, okay? Nobody's going to get their information from the news anymore. They're going to get them from coaches and influencers. And by the way, you should all become influencers. What is an influencer? An influencer is a leader. You guys all should be massively influential. Quit keeping your mouth shut. Open your mouth, whatever you're good at. Teach people it. 
get crazy, don't lay under the radar. The, the worst thing that could happen to you in your life is obscurity. Obscurity means nobody knows who you are. So many of you are so cool. I, I've met so many of you, man. Every one of you I've met, and I'm like, dude, if people knew who you guys were, like, you guys would be, man, like, not, not only would you be fulfilled, right? But like, but like, dude, you guys would have a life that you never imagined. But the problem is, is that you won't get out there. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254, 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Now, I want to tell you something, right? You need to take what you stand for and what you believe in, and you guys need to start putting this shit out on social media. Now, listen to me. I don't want you to just say, okay, well, so, social media has two, two sides to it. Number one, you watch other people all day long. You're distracted. You're not building the life you want. There's that side of social media. And then there's another side of social media that says, hey, where's my audience? Where's my people? I want to impact people's lives. Where are they at? Where's my tribe? You know, and then you're looking for your people, okay? Dude, here's the craziest thing. If I could go through my DMs with you guys and I could let you guys look in my DMs box, box I get two to 300 DMs a day that say, dude, you changed my life. My life will, it will never be the same because of you. These are people I've never met. These people would love to do coaching with me, which we do do coaching with them. But dude, really what they're looking for is they're looking for someone that they wanna look up to and someone to be the example. Every one of you on this call, you guys should decide to do one thing. And, and, and you should only have one thing on the forefront of your mind all day, every day. That is to be the fucking example for everyone else in the world what it means to have a blessed, great, happy life. And I want to tell you guys something, and I mean this. I was talking to my team this morning about discomfort. And I've heard a lot of talk on social media where they're like, you got to enjoy the pain. You got to suffer. Guys, I can work my ass off and that's not discomfort. I, I am born to work hard. I am born to grind. I love, you know what's discomfort to me? If you guys are taking notes, write this down. I'm going to give you Andy Elliott's definition of discomfort. Living a fucking unfulfilled life. That's the most uncomfortable thing I could ever imagine possible. I want to give you guys a perspective and I want to tell you that you're welcome to steal it. And if you do steal it, be prepared for a life you never imagined you could have. So everybody's so focused on what's tomorrow that people don't live today. Most of you, you're chasing. Do me a favor, write this down. Stop chasing and own your fucking life. Own it. Own it. Guys, stop chasing. So many of you, guys, I, I, I fly out on Thursday uh, to go to Cabo with some people for a big mastermind and then I go to Vegas for some fucking event and then we go to uh, Andy Frazella's and then it's like, it's like, it's like, I got so much shit going on tomorrow that's like, it's exciting, but what about right motherfucking today? What about my team right here that I was with all day long? I was present. Everybody write down the word present. If you want to live a life that is, 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 is unreal, that, that people can't even comprehend why you're so fucking happy, why you love everything that's going on. It's for one simple reason. You're present and you stop chasing. Listen, if you'll do what I tell you to do right now, life will fucking chase you. Everyone will chase you. Everyone will want to do business with you. Everyone will, 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 will want to join you. Okay, so number one, there's a couple things. Number one, be the fucking example. Okay, I'm gonna go through a list of shit. Under being the example, look, less than seven or eight percent body fat. I know, I know, trim the fuck up. Okay, be the example. What does that mean? Be elite. Be who people want to become physically. Okay, number two, mentally. I want you to have the best damn perspective that ever existed. So let me give you my perspective of mentally. Mentally means me working hard is not uncomfortable. Me not working hard is uncomfortable. Okay, that's, that's uncomfortable. Okay, me, me grinding, that's not uncomfortable. Me running 10 miles when I hate running, that's not uncomfortable. Me sitting on my ass, that's fucking uncomfortable. Okay, like that makes me fucking sick. Okay, me watching my family let life pass and me not being a part of it, that's uncomfortable. That, the thought of that makes me very 
unfulfilled. If you guys can find fulfillment in just being present, and I, dude, this is so easy, man, but no one knows how to do this. Let me give you the skill that if you do this, you just leveled your life up 20X, 20X, you, you leveled it up 20X. If you can just be present. See, we're on this call right now, right? And I'm giving you advice that will change your life forever. I'm giving you advice that if you have a team, if you have an army, if you have a company, you make sure they live by these rules too. Can I ask you a question? If my guys are going to work for me for 10 hours a day and I told them, listen guys, I want you to be present with me for 10 hours. I want you to be here and I want you to give me all you got. I'm going to give you all I've got. And after 10 hours, you're going to have 14 more hours to do whatever you want with whoever you want and just go be present with those people but for 10 hours with me and you we're gonna f it up your team will be like damn man that's actually pretty simple i can do that when you take all the complicated shit out of it it makes it real real easy for people to understand how simple winning is okay i want to tell you guys something real quick okay you want to know how fast you can f scale when you're a badass as fast as you want. Some of you that said you want to open a coaching program, I can show you how to go from $1,000 a day to a million dollars a day if you wanted to. Number one, people won't do anything for somebody who they don't want to be. Remember this, if you can be, if you, if you, every one of you can be the person that inspires your team, that is a spirit, listen, a fucking real spirit that literally runs around the office that's so undeniable that you're the leader and that you got good intentions and you got a good fucking heart your team will do anything for you they will kill for you I'm not a leader that would ever manipulate someone to do anything bad I tell my team every day I say listen by the way leaders always hold themselves to the highest accountability and and they put themselves on notice in front of their team notice I'm not telling you that I tell my team hey if anybody lies to me you're out of here no 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 you know how I tell them? I say, if I ever lie to you, I want you to pack your shit and leave. If I ever lie to you, if I ever cheat one of you guys out of a penny, you get your ass up and fucking roll. If, I've ever, if I'm ever unloyal, if I ever talk behind your back, get out. I don't deserve you to follow me anymore. I don't deserve you. I've set the tone for how they should operate by telling them about me. Remember, the number one way to sell in the close is to make it their idea. So I'm always telling my team by holding me accountable. Now when I tell my team this shit, can I lie? Can I cheat? Can I steal? Can I hold? No, dude. I gotta now hold myself to this standard. All right, now let's go to social media. Wes Watson that was here this last weekend, one of the things that he said, he uses social media as an accountability tool to make sure that every day people see that he is doing what he says he's going to do every freaking day. So if you guys that are like, oh, social media, that's for kids. Dude, you're an idiot. You're missing a nine figure business because you're a dummy and you won't show people that you're accountable. Matter of fact, you know, some of you are having a problem right now. You're like, Andy, I'm just having a hard time coming up with content. Dude, you are the fucking content. Come on, man. What are you talking about? Dude, everybody's sick of these fake motherfuckers watching Ed Milet say something and then they go say it on their channel and they're like, yeah, everybody's going to like me because I just went and said what everybody's saying. Dude, you need to be you. Your goal is to build you, to build your brand, to do things the way that you believe that they should be done. And every freaking person out there that likes what you're doing, dude, they'll, they'll be your audience. They'll be your future client. And by the way, hey, do me a favor. If you really want to build a coaching program or build the best company in the world, everybody, do me a favor. Give away your best value for free. Empty the tank every day and give away. Listen, you may say, Andy, what if I give away all my best value? Then like people can't pay me for anything. No, you dumbass. If you give away your best value, people are going to say, that's a motherfucker I want to roll with. You've already ruined the value of money for me. I gave you nothing and you've changed my life. I want to roll with this son of a bitch. Everybody else is like pay to play. If you want to know how to do it, you got to pay me. Listen, anybody that's watched me on social media, you probably watched me for a certain time before you, before you paid to do any business with me and I gave you your return just in free content. I want you guys to know this. Accountability on social media daily is the greatest way for you to build your personal brand. You must stay in their faces. 
Some of you, you're flashing the pan. You'll shoot for a week straight and then you won't. By the way, take that away. We're not shooting. We're documenting. Write this down. When I build my brand, I'm going to document my life on five different, six different platforms. You're going to document your life. And by the way, listen to me. Those of you that will document your life faster, okay? Those of you that can change the quickest, you're going to build the biggest brands, okay? Is it refreshing to see a mother be an overcomer and change their life? Yeah, I love it, man. I love seeing people change. Dude, so many people stay the same all the time. How many times have you guys in your gym you work out in, you go to the gym every freaking week, you see the same people, they look the same. You're like, dude, you guys been working out in here for years and you look the same. Your shoulders look the same, your legs look the same. You don't even sweat in the gym anymore. I ain't never seen you throw up on the floor. You're not doing shit in the gym you're just maintaining dude your enemy is maintaining some of you right now listen there's a book david goggins wrote and look i love goggins but he wrote a book it's called never finished i would highly recommend that you guys listen to it on like maybe a little bit faster of a speed than one like 1.2 1 or something let it go a little quicker um, it'll take you about 11 hours to get through the whole book. Dude, it is one of the greatest books ever. If any of you right now have ever hit a mountain and then you've, you've gone back, when you're maintaining, you lose it all, okay? There's this thing called keep, keep a chip on your shoulder and I talk about it every day. And dude, you guys need to think about all the fucking people that don't believe in you right now and all the people who truly think you guys ain't gonna amount to shit, okay? And you guys need to carry that shit around in a bag. And at any point you take your foot off the gas, you need to pour, pour gasoline down your fucking throat. I mean it. And it needs to stir your ass up. If it doesn't bother, people say it doesn't bother me when people talk shit. No, it fucking bothers me. And I'm going to burn their eyes out with my winning. I didn't say I was going to say something to them. I don't comment to losers, but I'm going to burn their fucking eyes out. That's for sure. Okay? And I want you guys to torture your haters with your success. I want you to intentionally make sure they see you win and win at a big level so what do we got to do number one you got to be the example that's number one and i think it's physical i think it's having a great mindset by the way if you want to really blow everybody away okay um your family the people that you live with the people that you love um make sure they're transforming with you okay my wife when she transformed with me like dude it was huge had my wife not gone on this journey with me, we wouldn't have a business today. It wouldn't have been enough just for me to do it. I, I know that's crazy, but there's lots of male people that are influencers that are just like me, but they didn't take their fucking wives with them. I'm gonna go over some names, you ready? Write this down. Tony Robbins. Have you ever seen his family? I haven't. I love him. He's inspired the fuck out of me. I've seen his wife on stage with him, but I've never seen his kid. I've seen a picture one time. Why? Why? I think a lot of people don't really want to show their families. What does everybody live for? What's the most important thing to anybody? Their family. Andy Frazella, I love him. He's amazing, okay? Emily's got her own book, but a lot of the times, other than his podcast, he runs on his own. I love him, okay? But he, and he, he doesn't have any kids, okay? What, what's your unfair advantage? Where's your kids at? Show people your kids. People need to see them. Show people your kids are badasses. You know, there's a guy that I coach, and his name is uh, Kyle. He runs a company called Superhuman Fathers, right? And if you guys have seen him or if you know him, he always posts pictures of his, wife's, his wife and his kids. He didn't do that in the beginning. And I told him, add your wife to your business, and it'll change everything. Dude, their, their company's blowing up. It's so crazy, okay? I mean, look at Ed Milet, look at David Goggins. Do you see his wife? Do you see his? No, you don't see these people, man. I want to tell you, this is what you need to do. If you're doing life with somebody, make sure people see what you stand for and your core values that'll make you stand out over everyone else. Because most people, they're in it to try to raise their own self, but they don't, they don't take their family with them and it's unattractive. And by the way, most of you won't hear me on this. I'm just telling you, if you want to be the best, this is how you do it. Now. One of the biggest things that I'll tell you is, is that right now, if you guys want to really go and smash it, okay, which I'm going to give you some, some tactical shit, just make sure that you're present in everything you do. Make sure that you stop racing ahead for the future. Make sure that you make today count. Um, you know, I got Sean Pollard, who's my right-hand guy. 
He's right here. You guys see him? Sean, what's up? He's always here with me. I want to tell you guys something. Listen, with Sean, okay, I, fucking ball, I grind his balls off. But you know what I do? I always make sure that he has time for his wife. I always make sure that he has time for the gym. I always make sure that all the things that I'm going after in life, I make sure he gets them also. And honestly, I think that a lot of people, when they go to build a company, they want to get what they want, but they don't want their people to get what they're going after either. You, you want to, but you really don't make sure and ensure that it happens. Well, if you do, and you end up, if you don't do that, and you end up getting what you want, and they don't, they're going to leave you. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254. 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Do you want everybody in your life and the team that you build? If you want to build something great, you got to build the team. Like any, any of you right now, if you're going to build something awesome, you're going to need people. The bigger you get, the more people you need. If you don't think you're gonna need people, you're an idiot. Your people need to be a reflection of the leader. If you come and shake my hand, after you meet me and you go meet my team, you go, F you're all the same. That's because the leader has ensured that the team knows what to be like, and then also, I make sure that they also get what I want, that what I want too. Why? Because I don't want them to see me pull up and drive a nice, nice cars, have a good life, me being you know, awesome to my wife and them being disconnected with their wife. Listen to me, if you have something that your team doesn't have, okay, there'll be resentment. They'll fucking hate you because you have something that they don't have. And then they'll think they need to go start their own business because you're the business owner and you have what they can't get. So then they're thinking, Fuck, I need to start my own business. That way I can have what he has. You guys are so dumb. They could have been an employee, they could have worked for you, and they could have had the same thing. But, but, but you didn't take your team with you also. Guys, I take my team to Mexico with me every quarter. In the beginning, there was three of us that went, okay? Last quarter we went, there were 70-something of us. Listen, me and my wife had a conversation. We go, should we really go with 70 people? I mean, that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of guys join our company because they want, they've seen us do these things and they want to go do these things with us. You know, what, you know what our team loves more than making money? The journey and the time that they get to spend with us. I want you guys to build a life that's so amazing, that's so magnetic, that's so infectious. Not only does social media fucking love it because you're living your real life and it's refreshing to other people how, how great your shit is, but also, man, it also inspires the fuck out of your wife or your husband and your children. And dude, I want to tell you guys, man, like if you don't have what you want in life right now, guess what? Build it. Start fucking today. You know what a lot of your problems are? You keep planning, but you never fucking execute. And also I want to tell you guys something. This is the, this is the cardinal sin to being a coach. If you want to build a coaching program, I dare you to not really be who you say you are. You won't fucking make it. There's not a chance in hell that winning will recognize you. There's a book that Tim Grover wrote called Relentless, and I know that most of you have all read it. And in the book Relentless, Tim Grover, he says, does winning recognize you? You know what that fucking means? That means this. If you're not doing what you know you should be doing and what you're telling other people to do, you will turn winning off and winning will leave you. You'll say, Andy, but I'm doing the social media. But Andy, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. You're probably not really who you say you are. Okay? Now listen, I want to tell you something. When I started my coaching program, you know what I had? No CRM, no marketing, no nothing. You know what I knew how to do? Pick up a mother and telephone and dial. That's all I did. And dude, some days I dialed for two or three days straight and I didn't make a sell. You know what? I kept dialing, man. I knew one day it was going to change. I want to give you guys a secret. I know you've heard it, but I want to make sure that you understand this. Write down three. Three stands for three years. If for the next 365 days times three, which is three years, you can do what I'll teach you on these coaching calls every day, seven days a week, and you'll take really good care of people, 
you'll keep recreating and becoming a better leader and a better example for the world and become a better human being and truly wear your heart on a sleeve, you will have more people than you know what to do with and you will be making millions and millions and millions of dollars and so will your clients. I can't tell you exactly when it will be for you. I guess it depends on how fucking extreme you are. I wanna tell you guys this. See this shirt? I showed up today and I said, hey, Alex Smith. I said, where's your shirt? Now, when we get on the next call, it'd be cool to get on and all you motherfuckers got your name on your shirt. Right? Like, wouldn't it be stupid if we logged on and you didn't? And you say, Andy, uh, but my company's name is uh, uh, Flex Gym. Dude, people don't know who Flex Gym is. People need to know who you are. I'm telling you, I can have Flex Gym on my shirt, but I promise you this. I wear Elliot or Elliot Army in my shirt everywhere I go. People, they see me and they don't even recognize me yet, but they see Elliot and they say, I know that motherfucker, Elliot. That's right, that's that Elliot, that's that Elliot, Elliot team right there. Here's the cool thing, watch this. You wanna know the compound effect of being a great leader? Okay, does your team wanna be you? If they do, they'll all wear the same gear you're wearing. Now I'm gonna ask you a question, okay? If you're not willing to wear it every single day, what you believe in, your team ain't gonna wear it either. And if you wear it every day, then your team starts wearing it. Next thing you know, everywhere you go, everybody's like, dude, who are you guys? When we, I live in a, a Scottsdale, Arizona, but I live in a place called Fountain Hills, okay? And when we moved here, my shirt said Elliot, okay? Within one month, everywhere we went in town, since there's 50 of us and they all wear Elliot, everybody knows Elliot. Now, when we're running on the street, we're going into a store, everybody's like, Elliot, Elliot. They don't even know our names. They know that we're Team Elliot. They know our energy, they know our fire. And by the way, you know what I tell my team? Anybody you meet that you come in contact with, you shake their hand, you make sure they have a better day, and you onboard them to the Elliot Army way. Everywhere we go, and they do it. And now everywhere I go, Dude, I can't even buy dinner. Everybody buys it for us because of the way that my team treats people when they go somewhere. It's called reciprocity. It's the strongest selling skill in the world. Do for others what you want done for yourself. Do it for them first. Give it away for free. Give people what they don't expect up front for free. And by the way, I promise you, dude, there's nothing greater, okay, than building a personal brand if you want to build your company. I told you, next 10 years, that's what it's going to be. Okay, so I wrote down five things that I wanted to talk about. Okay, and I, everybody write down this word, mastery. Okay, because like mastery is the key word because 99% of the people in the world, you've heard me say this, but they're a master of none. Okay, what does that mean? They fucking mastered nothing. That means that like some of you are doing something right now, currently, but you haven't mastered it, which is why you're not getting paid the top 1% in your industry. As a coach, we probably get paid in the top 10% in the coaching industry, in the world. The Elliott Group does. How does that happen? Well, number one, we started at the bottom, we worked our way up. A lot of you guys right now, you're at the bottom and you're working your way up. You're doing great, you've made some money, but you're on a new journey. Everybody write down new journey. New journey means a new motherfucking person. Listen to me, if you guys don't change daily, nothing changes. If you change today, but you don't change tomorrow, that means you, you did a little bit today, but then you gave it all back tomorrow. Everybody write this down. Five things you need to master. I wrote down five. I was thinking about these last night with my wife. I said, babe, if there was five things that we should master, what should they be? So I started writing these things down and I wanna share it with you because these are things that mean a lot to me. And I remember mastery me, means being the top 1% in the world, okay? All right, so I put down master knowing yourself. Write this down, this is super important. I don't know why a lot of people seem like they talk a lot of shit about everything, but they don't really know who they are. It's okay, so a rule number one, you gotta master knowing yourself, okay? Underneath that, I want you to put self-awareness. This is really important. When I say the word self-awareness, I don't think people understand what that means. Do you guys, are you aware of your weaknesses? I mean, like, think about it. Are you really aware? Are you brushing your, your, your weaknesses under the rug? Or are you exposing them? Do you know why we're all on this coaching call together? For one simple reason. I wanna motivate, I wanna inspire, I wanna encourage you to go get everything you want. I wanna give you tactical blueprints. I'm gonna do the same shit you guys are gonna do. But really, I wanna fucking expose your weaknesses. I want you to look in the mirror and be like, fuck. I'm fixing that, and I want you to fix it now, okay? So I put self-awareness. Underneath that, I want you to put the power of choice and self-control. What do I eat? 
Who do I hang out with? How hard am I gonna work out today? Okay, I wanna tell you guys something. If you guys wanna have a crazy fucking life, you're gonna have to run with crazy fucking people. Okay, listen, I'm not asking you to, you know, give up your core values. I'm not asking you to give up God. I'm not asking you to give up anything. I'm asking you to find people who believe in everything that you believe in. You know what I'm saying? And they're extremists, they're obsessed people, okay? But if you if you were with me and I was gonna hang out with you every day, I would want you to want to master knowing yourself, okay? Most of you really don't know who you are. You spend so much time working. You spend so much time following a schedule. You spend so much time, you know, doing shit that like you really don't take the time to really understand who you really are. Okay, does that, does that make sense? Like this is the key guys. Who's gonna be the person that's gonna change your family's life? You are. Well, if you don't master knowing you, how the hell are you gonna change your family's life? When I started to study me, I learned really quickly that I was good at a couple things and I was really shitty at a lot. And dude, I didn't like me at all. And that's why I changed. I really think if you guys see something that disgusts you, dude, that, that's good. Like dude, I realized I didn't have a backbone when I was younger. I used to get walked all over. And dude, one day my wife's like, dude, you don't have a backbone. That f***ing pissed me off. Okay, well guess what? Then I had 10 times too big of a backbone immediately. Okay, but I needed to get angry to fix that f***ing problem that I had. So I put master knowing yourself, number one, self-awareness. Number two, right, the power of choice and self-control, okay, and, and put over your actions. Self-control, right, power of choice and self-control over your actions, control over your actions. Dude, you guys can control everything that goes on in your life. You can control every choice. You guys are in charge of your life. You know, you're the manager of your life. You don't have to manage anyone else but yourself. And if you manage yourself, then you're qualified to manage lots of other people. Okay, and also one more thing. I, wanna, I want you to write down um, who you want to be. Most people don't know who they want to be. Like, 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 do me a favor, like tonight, like I want you guys to go and, and find somebody that you want to be like. And I know this sounds corny, right? But I went to the vault in 2020, I think. First time I ever went. And um, anyways, hey, see big dog. Um, 2020, went to the vault. And uh, Patrick Bet David said, hey, you need to create a vision board. And you know, like, I mean, that sounds kind of cliche, right? Like, come on, make a vision board. I'm 40 years old. I'm like, come on, man. Make a vision board. I thought I was going to get something tactical to go back and kill it with. Yeah, make a vision board. What, what do you want to look like? Who do you want to be? What are the core values you want to, you, you want to emulate? Who, who do you want to sound like? What is your image? Who do you want to speak like? You know, what kind of business do you want to build? And I thought, dude, I honestly don't even know the answers to any of these things. So I went and built a vision board. And I, I literally put a picture of who I wanted to look like which I don't look like how I used to look because I saw someone else every day that I wanted to be like. Um, I'm gonna tell you the craziest thing. You guys think that you can't change your face? You can't change your body? You can't change your voice? You can't change everything about you? You guys already know I said this. Go look me up on YouTube. That's not, you're gonna say, that's not you. It, it, it wasn't me. I was living in a an alien's body that was not me here I thought I was this guy but when I looked in the mirror I saw that guy okay now I want to tell you something that's cool this is what I love that motherfucker's still lurking in behind me he's still in the mirror that 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 weak ass pussy, he's still there I hated that guy and since I know he's trying to come back every day I bury his ass but he doesn't I didn't kill him forever he can still come back if I decide to let my foot off the gas if I decide to stop pouring gasoline down my throat, you think that guy's gonna creep back? Yeah, he's dying to come and be a loser again. No ways, man, I'm gonna keep his ass buried. So you need to know who you wanna be. I, I would suggest you guys make a vision board. I had to drop my ego, my pride. I had to become a kid again. Um, I started looking on the internet for you know shit I wanted to be like, and I start posting it on this board, and I'm gluing it. It was like I was back in the first grade doing a science project. Seems a little silly, except for what it does is it creates, it creates clarity, okay? And if you're not fucking crystal clear who you wanna be or how your life's gonna go, I'm sorry to tell you this, but someone else is gonna tell you how your life's gonna go. No fucking way, okay? I, I, I screwed up for 40 years on that one. Last four have been amazing, why? Because I decided to change and not be too good for anything and be open-minded. If you guys could write down just these two words, open-minded, as I talk about stuff, what I've learned is a lot of people who won't grow, 
They, it's only because they hear things and they say, ah, that sounds stupid. Yeah, actually growing a new life is pretty simple. Most people just overcomplicate it. That's why they never change. It's really not that hard. It's proximity and it's every day getting better. And day by day, you start to recreate yourself and become a better version. 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, you just start becoming different people. All right, number two. That's number one, master knowing yourself. Number two, mastering the ability to reason. This is a big one, man. I, I don't think a lot of people know how to reason. And I put a couple things underneath this. I put how to deal with decisions you make, okay? Like guys, decision making is probably, okay, let's put it this way. The life you have today is because of the decisions you made yesterday, okay? The decisions you make today will show you the life you're gonna have tomorrow. Like it's. It's that simple. Okay, so how to deal with your decisions you make. And number two, <clears throat> write down high stake choices. You gotta be able to make high stake choices. Write this down, with uncertainty. Which means I need you to understand something, okay? You're gonna have to bet on you. Okay, mastering the ability to reason will honestly always go back to how much you believe in you and how much you feel like you can bet on you. Can I ask you a question? What if the odds in your favor say don't do this, but you know you need to do it and you bet on yourself so much that you know that you, 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 you can risk this? Okay, I had to make a decision today and I won't tell you what it is, but I had to make a decision today that it was very uncomfortable for me to make, but I know that it was the right choice. And I bet on me and my wife and I know it's gonna be great. I wanna tell you guys something, listen to me. Your ability to master reasoning will ultimately go back to how much you believe in yourself. A lot of you guys, every single time there's uncertainty, you don't do something. It's like you need more certainty. When you go to start a business, let's explain this to you. 99% of businesses that, that, that get started go out of business. Well, why the f do people start businesses? Well, because if you want to have a f***ing life that no one else has ever imagined to have, one that's unreal, it's like a fairy tale life, you got to work for yourself, period. And I think a lot of you guys know that. But remember this, okay, underneath that, you gotta put this down. The build is the bitch. So building something great is always gonna be a pain in the ass. But remember, the only thing that's uncomfortable would be not living in our, in fulfillment and, our, and in our purpose. So like if I'm building something and I know that it's gonna be special, like I'm not in discomfort working my ass off. I'm not in discomfort um, spending a lot of money on my business that's not making money right now because I know one day it'll make money. Does that make sense? I know one day I'll have that life. I know one day all this training that I'm putting in and that I'm paying for is going to pay off. It will. Every single bit of it will. But you've got to be able to bet on you. You've got to be able to believe in you. And my, look, I want to ask you a question. Why do so many people, right, give in? at some point, at some day, to not believing in themselves. Dude, everybody write this down. Every time I doubt myself, I start over again. You wanna go back to the finish line? Fucking A, keep doing it. Go ahead, doubt is a fucking traitor. You know, most of you aren't screw, you're not getting screwed by anyone else, you're actually screwing yourself. This is what most of y'all's life looks like. And I'm gonna explain it because I've lived it, which is why I can talk to you about it. It's like running a marathon and at mile 10, turning around and stopping and walking back to the starting line. Like that's gotta suck. And I did that for a long time. So you guys need to decide, number one, who do you wanna be, okay? Also, the power of choice. What choices do you guys need to make to ensure that the life that you're going after fucking happens? And then taking control over your actions. You're in control of your life, okay? No one else is in control. Everything that's happening to you right now, good and bad, is your fault. You gotta own all of it. Okay, now listen, number three, I put down mastering building the right team. This is a big one. Okay, so what are we gonna master? Five things, master knowing yourself, mastering the ability to reason. How do I reason when, when uncertainty's on the line, especially in high stakes situations, okay? Um, you know, easy, easy decision making is easy, but high stake situations, and that's the ones where you guys need to really know who you are. You need to really believe in yourself. And if you did the vision board and you know who you want to be, you could ask yourself, does this decision that I'm making align with that motherfucker that I want to be? Everybody write this down. I want to, I want to tell you something that Patrick Bet David taught me when I was at the vault. Now I've, I've, I've called it a lot of different things. I've called it altering my belief 
altering my identity, but he calls it future truth. And that's what he says. He says, he says, your goal is to lie to yourself and basically pretend to be who you want to be in life, that vision board today, as if you're already that person. And he goes, it's called living in your future truth, which means it's not true today, but in the future, it is a truth. It will be true and this will happen. So I'm going to live today in my future truth. It's a big one, man. When I heard that shit, I was like, man, that shit's good. And it's just fucking flows smooth. Future truth, I like that shit, okay? So future truth, guys. Okay, master building the right team. Okay, now listen, can I say something? And by the way, like, this is not to divert anybody off of what their plan is and what they're doing. But I want everybody to write down two words. Number one, I want you to write down entrepreneur. And number two, I want you to write down intrapreneur. You know, I said something a little bit ago about if you want to, you know, build your own life, you got to work for yourself. That's actually not true. Okay. If you want to build a life that no one's ever had, you got to work for yourself. That's actually not true. So I take that back. I want you to decide what you're going to do and what you want for other people. Number one, you're going to be an intrapreneur. An intrapreneur is someone who works for the entrepreneur or you're going to be an entrepreneur. Now, an intrapreneur is a person who finds an entrepreneur who knows they're gonna go big. And they fucking help that son of a bitch go bigger than they ever imagined. They know their role. They get a great life in that company. They don't have to take any of the risk. They blow up that person. That person takes great care of them. Boom, it's a badass, beautiful life. You're happy as hell, and you literally have minimal risk in life. Does that make sense? That's called an intrapreneur. I want to tell you guys something, four out of five millionaires work for someone else. I'm not telling you not to open your own business, but I want you to really think about this. There could be someone right now, I'm giving you an example. I was just sitting there, you know, talking to Brad Lee and Brad Lee's like, dude, I wish that I could find some fucking people like you have on your team. Like, I wish I could, like I'm actively looking for these people all the time. Well, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, well, I, it's hard to get a job with these big influencers. No, it's not. Dude, dude, they're looking for crazy motherfuckers like you guys that can help them blow their shit up. And they'll take great care of you to be with them. I just wanted to say that. Number two, there's the entrepreneur. The entrepreneur takes all the risk, okay? Takes all the payroll. Takes all the expenses. Takes all the lawsuits. Takes all the beating. Usually the entrepreneur ages like a motherfucker the first three years of business. I'm gonna tell you guys, I, uh, if it wasn't for physical fitness, I probably would look, look 97 right now, okay? But I'm grateful that I work out like a son of a bitch, so even if my fa face ages with Botox in the gym, I'm gonna stay savage as shit. So Botox in the gym, open your own business, okay? Or work for someone else, and dude, you can look pretty your whole life, okay? But I'm just telling you, dude, guys, it is a and grind it is pure hell and if you're not willing listen okay so I want you to play the odds for a minute as an entrepreneur okay how many people right now that run businesses are looking for someone bad to come help them grow their build business every one of them okay so there's a plethora of these opportunities that exist now as an entrepreneur okay how many people right now are wanting to open their own business and kick ass and now I want to be a business owner all these people you got to fucking outwork all of them you gotta outsmart all of them. You gotta outskill all of them. You gotta outcare all of them. Now, hey, here's my point. You gotta pick a road, and whatever road you guys pick, you're gonna win. But I just wanted to tell some of you that you don't have to open your own business. You could actually have a business today, shut it down, go work for someone else, make more money, and be happier. Like, it's just the truth. Now, I'm not telling you to go one way or another, but I'm trying to tell you that when we go into master building the right team, you can be either one of these people to build a team, but building a team is one of the most important things in the world. So I wanna give you some things to think about. Okay, you ready? Write this down. Lead people to find the best in themselves. Your goal, if you wanna build a badass team, the right team for you, you gotta lead people. Notice I said lead, leadership. You have to lead, you have to self-lead and then lead others to find the best in themselves, which means your goal is to max out others' potential. That's your goal. Your goal is to make sure that other people find the best in themselves. That's your number one goal 
if you want to build the right team. And if you do that, people will feel so fulfilled around you. They'll work harder for you than they ever have for anyone else. Matter of fact, people will work for you and, and they won't even believe that they should get to work for you. Could you guys imagine having a team that comes in and says, I can't believe we get to work here. Like how many companies have teams where people go in and say, I can't believe that we get to have this life in this company. If you guys are training with me, I have that team. I feel that way around my team. I can't believe I get to have them. This is the secret. If you can build this, you'll never worry about your ever restarting. You'll build something that is the new fucking Mecca for how to run life. Everybody will want to be like you guys and everybody in the world will be lined up for miles to come work for you. We did a, uh, we did a trick one day. I was just showing Sean Pollard, one of my guys, um, I said, hey guys, it's Andy Elliott. We're adding a few more members to Elliott Army. If you guys have ever wondered how you can work for me, send me a 60 second video on Instagram and DM me about why you wanna work for me and why you're the right person for me. This was like six months ago. We took over, it was like a thousand or 2000 DMs over 24 hours. Like dude, why should you build a personal brand again? Because when you are growing and you're gonna need people, well, you don't need to run an ad. <laughs> you just go out and tell everybody that there's an opportunity for anybody who's been watching you, who's been wanting to live a life like you have, that there's a chance. And dude, they'll come out and, and there's your people. Like dude, it's never been easier to build a badass company than now, especially with people that are just like you wanna be. So building the right team, I said this, lead people to find the best in themselves and also write this down, build trust. You know, me and my wife always talk about a circle of trust. Dude, no great team gets built without the right culture and without building trust, you'll never scale. If your team don't trust you, they'll never scale your business, okay? So culture and trust, those are the two things. By the way, who must show the trust first? The leader. Guys, I wanna tell you something about leadership. Trust people first, and then if they screw you, Okay, then move on. But people are always like, oh man, I've gotten screwed, dude. People got to give me their trust first. Then, you know, they got, dude, I'm not really into that, man. If you tell me that I can trust you, I'm going to trust you to the best of my ability until you show me otherwise. I refuse to live any other way. And by the way, you guys can choose how you want to live. But I can, I can look into someone's eyes. And guess what? Everybody write this down. <laughs> dude, this is so important. I'm glad we're talking about this on team building. Everybody write this down. You can always replace skill. Skill's easy to replace, but it's hard to replace heart. I want you guys to do me a favor. Before you ever, ever let go of an employee, I want you to ask yourself one question. Does this person's heart still represent the core values of our company? Maybe that person needs a little bit more coaching. If their heart is in the right place, you, you, you can't go out and find heart very often, okay? Skills easy. If somebody has the greatest skill in your company, but they've lost heart, I could can them in two seconds and I wouldn't even think twice. But if somebody doesn't have the skill they need, but they have the core values in the heart, I'm not giving up on them. I'm gonna coach them better. I'm gonna coach them harder. I'm gonna invest in them more. Because dude, I don't fucking let people down when they continue to show up with heart every day, okay? Eventually these people are gonna have a breakthrough at some point. Okay, by the way, people say, I don't have time. Yeah, you can do. Go hire one wrong employee without heart, they'll fucking tear your company down, you have plenty of time to rebuild your fucking company. If you really care about time, you got somebody with heart, be grateful for them, appreciate them. Hey dude, just become a better coach. Or if you're not good at teaching people, go pay someone else to teach them. I have lots of companies that pay me to teach their people, okay? Not everybody's a good teacher. Just remember what I said, you can replace skill, but you can't replace heart, okay? Super, super important. I put underneath culture, I put number four, mastery, strategy to scale. So a lot of people don't have strategies to actually scale. So we're talking about five kinds of, of mastering, okay? And I'm kind of going full circle here. Number one, master knowing yourself. Number two, mastering the ability to reason. Number three, master building the right team. If you wanna go far, you're gonna have to go with the team. Master the strategy to scale. So this is a big one, man. A lot of people don't have the right strategies. Um, let me give you a couple that I have found highly effective. Um, I put holding people accountable for their actions. This is a big one. What I've learned with a lot of companies 
is that a lot of companies don't even hold people accountable for their actions anymore at all. Now, I'm not telling you that when somebody messes up to go fire them. What I am telling you is that if you're in a company and a culture in which people hold people accountable for their actions, people are less likely okay, to let their foot off the gas and get comfortable. Okay? My company, even though that we're all family, even though that we're all brothers, even though that we're all sisters, even though that we all run as a cult, a team, an army, whatever the hell you want to call it, we are all holding each other massively accountable. There's big time accountability in our company every day. I've got a guy right here, I don't know if anybody knows uh, Keaton with Limitless uh, Society, right? Keaton's a great guy. We're building Keaton's sales team right now, okay? We're building it in-house here, his uh, Limitless Society sales team. And um, Ryan, who's his CEO, and a couple of their sales reps were in our 8.30 meeting this morning where I was not, because my team runs the sales meeting every morning because leaders make leaders, okay? I started doing the sales meetings when we started. I haven't gotten too good for it. They're fucking great at it. They're better than me. This morning they walked in and Ryan goes, I, I, I can't believe the way that your team runs in these meetings. It's the most intense football team crazy shit I've ever seen in my life. It, it's not just hype, it's tactical, it's strategy. They're bought in, they're fucking hard everywhere. They knock the dust off each other. They get ready to go to war. He goes, dude, it's almost like a, a fucking rugby team getting ready to play a game or like honestly back in the old days like people are about to run across the fucking field and go kill somebody and it's 8.30 in the morning and they're ready. Guys, holding people accountable. I tell my people every day, I'm not going to babysit you. I want you guys to write this down. I'm not going to babysit you. I am not your mom. I'm not your dad. I'm not going to babysit you. I'm going to be your leader and I'm going to trust that you're going to do what you say you're going to do. I didn't say trust you, you're going to do what I said you were going to do, what you said you were going to do, okay? And by the way, all that anybody ever wants in this world is trust and I'm fucking giving it to you, okay? So holding people accountable for their actions, write this down, gain and maintain momentum, gain and maintain momentum. I think that a lot of people, the reason why they don't have a strategy to scale is because they don't have momentum in their company. Your secret to any showroom floor, to any call center, to any company is momentum. Guys, right now, I need you to write this down. Who are my culture drivers? You already know who my culture drivers are in my company. If you've been around me, you know who they are. They're crazy as fuck. They run around here. They don't let anybody even blink. That's how crazy they are. By the way, they're girls and they're guys. They're psycho. I know who my culture drivers are. I have meetings with them every morning. And by the way, you know what culture drivers do? They're not the only ones running around driving the culture. They make other people who aren't driving the culture uncomfortable and they demand Everybody underline the word demand. They demand people who aren't driving the culture to become culture drivers. Okay, hey, hey, by the way, listen to me. Always remember this. We're all going back to being a leader, which is self-leadership. Your team can't have what you're not. If you're not an example of what a good culture driver is, then how in the hell can you tell your team what being a good culture driver is? I'm the fucking culture driver. I'm the one that shows them how all this shit rolls. They learn it from me and then they repeat. Okay, someone has to lead the way in the beginning. Now, this isn't about me. It isn't, wow, look at me. No, it's that someone had to set the fucking standard first and then everyone else rolls into that standard. But you know what I've learned about leaders? A lot of them, they fucking tell their team they want them to become this and that and they're not that. Hey, by the way, listen to me. I want to tell every one of you something. If you want to be an influence to the world, do me a favor, go fucking look in the mirror. Do you look up to you? When you look at you, are you like, fuck, yeah. If you're not, they're probably not doing it either. And by the way, I'm not being sarcastic. I want you to be honest with yourself. Look in the mirror and be like, dude, would I fucking look up to me? If the answer is no, all right, what do we gotta do to fix it? Listen, if you're ugly, me, I'm not very good looking, but I can work out like a son of a bitch. Shit starts to change once you change your body. Maybe that's what you got to do, okay? Got bad hair? Just cut that shit off. Quit saving it. If you're pale as fuck, go get a tan. I don't know. <laughs> you got to do something. Dress a little better. But figure it out. 
You've got to figure out how to make yourself a little bit more attractive every day. And guess what? You know what I've learned is that a lot of people think this shit that I'm telling you is bullshit. You're like, oh, I thought we were going to learn something tactical. Dude, you not becoming who you need to be so I'll look up to you is as tactical as it fucking gets. Okay? And people don't like that shit. They're like, I thought we were going to learn something. Dude, you already know everything you need to know. The problem is you haven't fucking changed. Since you haven't changed, that's why you don't have shit. That's why you don't have what you want. Or that's why you have something, but you haven't scaled or grown in a long time. Okay? You guys need to reassess your drive. You need to figure out what drives you and you need to fucking attack. Okay? If you're getting bored, I talked about this on our last call. If you're getting stagnant, if you're getting fucking complacent, if you're getting comfortable, like, dude, you got a drive problem. I'm telling you, man, this is the key. All right. So, hey, and by the way, write this super important. I put gain and gain and maintain momentum, which means you never lose. Everybody write this down. Never have two bad days back to back. There's a rule in my company. We have a bad day. Okay. All right. That fucking sucked. That burned. But two bad days in a row, we're f this is going to be like an all-night skate. We're spending the night in this motherfucker. We're not going home. You can never have two bad days in a row. Never. Okay? But I want you to write this down. Systems to track and measure. You got to have systems that track and measure you. You have to. If you don't have systems that will track and measure your stuff, you're screwed. All right, so we're going to roll out on number five. Master power plays. Master power plays. All right, mastering power plays is I wrote this down to me. This is my power play, okay? And yours can be different, but I wanted to share mine. Leverage social media to frame the story of your life. As a salesperson, I always framed everybody so I could make sure that they made it their idea before they bought what I had. I needed to make sure they were in a great place. Um, I want you to leverage social media as a platform to frame your future audience to frame the people in the world on the fucking example that you guys live as a human being in life. And I literally, every single day, I want you to be consistent from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed to document, to inspire, and to create a new life, one that you've never had. Don't make it fake. Hey, listen to me. Don't make it fake, dude. Don't go rent a fucking Turo Ferrari to go drive it for the weekend so you can show people, yeah, man, if you got a fucking Honda Accord, roll the fucking Honda Accord and be like, dude, this bitch sucks. I don't fucking like it, but check back in four months, okay? And let's see if I'm still driving a fucking Honda Accord, okay? And I'm going to tell you this. When we started our business, we sold our house. We slept on mattresses on the floor. We sold all our furniture. And literally to this day, we still don't have a fucking house. Okay, because my home is my business, because I built my business, which has built my amazing life, which has allowed us to build a badass home. And dude, I'm so thankful that we lived below our means and gave up a lot of shit that was materialistic, that didn't mean anything to build a badass life. You know what I'm saying? I want to tell some of you guys, when you're going to the next level and you're going to build something that's super fucking amazing and you're getting to your next level of life, Sometimes you got to give up some shit that's a part of your old life. And dude, listen to me. It sucks if you think about like your old self. But when you think about your new self, you don't give a fuck. Your goal is that you're going to elevate. You're about to go to a level that no one ever imagined. You know what I mean? So the question is, is are you an entrepreneur, right? Or are you an entrepreneur? Okay. These five things that I just told you to master, what, what, what is your uh, master power play? Mine was social media. That's it. And matter of fact, my second power play, which I already told you, is building a team. Okay? A lot of people ask me, they say, hey, Andy, I want a badass team. How do I know you're the trainer that should, should be the one to teach them? I say, well, come fucking look at my team. And then, and, then, and then ask me that again. And whoever else you're looking at, fly in and go look at their team. Okay? And that'll answer your own question. See, what I want you to understand is that I want you to create a life in which shows people Everything that you say that they can have, it's the truth and it's real. And I need you to change very fast. Matter of fact, th there's two things we're going to end with. Number one, the person that can self-correct is forever wealthy. If you're on this call right now and you can self-correct, which means you can look at yourself in the mirror and say, I'm the fucking problem, I'm also the solution. And if you can own your shit, it, it's, it's over, okay? So number one, the person that can self-correct is forever wealthy. And number two... If you can get around the fear of what other people think about you when you're changing, you'll change fast as fuck, okay? Uh, Bradley always talks about this word, allodoxophobia, the fear of what other people think about you. 
And he just says, dude, the reason why most people don't change is the stupidest reason, but it's just because they are afraid of what other people think about them. Guys, when I got on social media, they fucking laughed at me. Okay, they called me a loser. They still call me a loser. Guys, we, we don't, guys, we're gonna have a billion dollar company one day and they fucking still tell me I'm a loser. I mean, come on, man. I mean, what are these people talking about? You know what they're talking about? You have the courage to do something they don't have the courage to do. They fucking hate you because you reached down, you grabbed your fucking sack, okay? Lady, sorry. But you know, hell, we got women that are fucking more savage than most men on these calls. And I love that shit. I love bad women. I want everybody to know on this call, I would not be anything without my wife, period. And for any of you um, that really wanna go far, um, I'm gonna tell you this, if you don't include your wife, you are fucked. You're fucked. You're not gonna make it. She's not going to sacrifice anything for you, and, uh, and it, 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 sh they know when you're real. So something that women have is an intuition that's fucking crazy. They have the craziest intuitions, and they know, they know when your intentions are right. And dude, I promise, I know my wife, I know what her goal is, and I want to tell you, I know that you know what your girl's goals are. My, my wife has one goal. She needs to be number one. When she's not number one, she'll can kill me when she's not number one. When I make her number one, she'll support me and ride with me everywhere. I have to make her number one. And some of you guys, you're, you're not putting your girl as being number one. And by the way, I know there's ladies on here, but I'm just telling you the way it works for guys. I know that women want to be number one. They may say they don't. That's like your girl saying she don't want to go out for her birthday. That's fucking bullshit. That's a trick. Take her ass out. You're about to be in the doghouse if you don't. Yeah, I don't want to go out. Bullshit. Get fucking dressed. We're going out. Okay, because I've done that shit. Jackie, one time, I was like, babe, you want to go out for your birthday? I shouldn't even ask. She was like, nah, I'm cool. I'm like, oh, okay, we'll hang out. Yeah, well, I figured out about 11 o'clock she did want to go out, and I'm an idiot, and that ruined the whole fucking birthday, and it was like two weeks kissing her ass. Okay, so like I'm telling you, don't fall for that shit. They want to be number one, make them fucking number one, and they'll give you anything, anything, and they're the most dangerous thing in the world, and in, in a good way. Okay, as long as you take care of them. And I want my girl to take care of me, so I gotta take really good care of her. And lastly, I wanna say something. If you wanna be a coach, I dare you to motivate other people all fucking day long, go to build the business, and then not put anything into your girl or your marriage. Okay, because then once they hear you getting fired up all fucking day long to help other people, and you don't put fired up energy into them, dude, trust me, it doesn't take very long until, until they start to fucking despise your ass. Okay? All right, because I used to do it all the time. I'd get everybody fired up all day long, and I'd go home and give my wife leftovers. You hear me say this before, but I'm just, these are some rules to building this fucking dream life. And by the way, these things, they're called standards. They're a way of living. And then I put one last thing. I put a successful business person eventually learns to identify leaks and opportunities in their business, okay? I need you guys to identify leaks. What are the holes you have in your business? Okay, how much money is it costing you continuing to turn a blind eye to these leaks? Okay, and also how much is it costing you not pursuing these new opportunities? That's it. And by the way, if you guys have everything you need and you just need to build on it, then you need to go through a season of saying no. If you have everything you need, if you have the product, if you have everything right now, you need to physically just go through a season of saying no. Stop getting distracted. I get asked to be on 800 podcasts a day and I say, no, 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 no. Okay, because if I did all that, I wouldn't have a business and I'd be fucking out of business. Okay, like, like you prayed for attention one day and then once you start to get it, you gotta be real careful who you give it to. Okay, so I just wanna tell you guys about these traps. Most people could have made it, but they get caught in a trap somewhere along the way. Our goal, guys, is to get it all. So, just wanna tell you guys, much love. I appreciate you guys. Let's go to war, man. I'll see you guys soon. Hey guys, I just want to tell you, you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.